Hey and howdy everyone, it's Jeannie with Paper Pixie Ink. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial, a relatively quick tutorial, <laughs> on how to make a kind of basic waterfall. I don't want to call it a folio because it's not really a folio, but um, it's just kind of basic and easy. This is um, a great gift. I like giving these around the holidays. They're fairly easy to make. You can make them nice and personal, which is very, very nice. Um, and they're kind of fun too because they are waterfalls. So let's get started. I am going to be using this paper pad from Park Lane. You don't need a lot of sheets, so I'm only going to use a little bit of it. Uh, this is a new one that they have out. It's a fall one. Um, it's called Simple Things. So there's 24 pages in this um, 6x8 pad. Uh, again, I'm only going to be using a few, <laughs> um, but they're, it's really, really nice paper. And some of them, I don't know if you can kind of see that, but they're like embossed. So... Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and prep all of this paper so that it is ready for me to use and we will be back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and prepped all of my paper for my paper pad and I also went ahead and cut a couple of pieces of chipboard to make my base cover. So again, this is going to be very, very basic. It's very easy to make. It's a lot of fun uh, and you can do it with paper from any collection, so for any season really. Um, these are cut to six and a quarter by eight and one eighth. So six and a quarter, eight and one eighth. And this is cut to one inch by eight and one eighth. Um, the reason I did this with eight and one eighth instead of eight and a quarter uh, is because when I went, so these were all perforated at the top and when I went to pull them out of the um, binding um, from the paper pad and cut them at or just below the perforations. It was actually only seven and seven eighths. <laughs> so I'm going to set those aside and I'm going to use um, some black cardstock to cover this. So I'm just going to grab a couple of pieces of black cardstock and we are going to glue them together. We can't do it this way because there is just not enough space this way. You could try. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> uh, so we're going to turn them this way. Um, we don't need all of this. So this works out well for this, kind of. Um, but we definitely don't need all of that. So I'm going to cut um, about three quarters of an inch off um, for these and then I am going to cut off two inches this way. So again I'm going to cut off about three quarters of an inch this way. And then I'm going to cut off about two inches this way. And then we should be good to go. So what I'm going to do is I am going to grab my glue and I am... I am just going to glue these two pieces together. You can use double-sided adhesive if that is what you prefer. Uh, I like liquid adhesive or a combination of liquid adhesive and my double-sided adhesive. So just depends on preference and what you find works the best. And then I'm just going to lay these out just to be sure 
we should be good there. Probably could have left a little bit more up here, but that's okay. So I'm just going to put glue on the back of this. side just like this flip this over and you can use a spacer if you want I'm just gonna eyeball this you want to make sure that you're leaving about an eighth of an inch or so just so that when you fold it, you're not going to break the fibers in the paper and cause it to tear. So same thing with this side. Trying to keep everything as even as possible. going to grab my cutting mat that I've got to stop standing up apparently. So I just grabbed my corner tool and I bought this off of Amazon. Uh, I believe you can buy them off Etsy as well uh, but this is the one that I got and it just takes the guesswork out of how much to cut off all of your corners. Um, so I think the rule is about an eighth of an inch or so, um, which seems to be about what you're getting with this. But I inevitably, every so often, I'll try it on my own and inevitably I screw it up. So I like my tool. All right, so I am going to use some of my scrapbook.com. I don't know if you can see that, but this is scrapbook.com double-sided adhesive. This is the quarter inch. I am just going to lay some all along my edges of my cardstock here. And I'm just using a very small um, old acrylic block that I have as a kind of tear point so that I get nice, even breaks. Double-sided adhesive like this can just be torn. I always make a mess. So I find it a lot easier to just do this. So once you have it done on all sides, let's go ahead and give it a quick burnish. And then I am just going to pull these sides up. These are the long sides. In preparation, I'm gonna pull the backing off of my double-sided adhesive. And then I am gonna put a thin thing of glue, thin strip of glue, right up against the chipboard because I want that cardstock to adhere right there really, really well. And then I'm gonna push this up. Along the rest. And then of course, I am going to burnish the heck out of it. And then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to remove the backing, put glue along the chipboard, and a little bit of glue along the rest of it, just so that I know I have a good hold there. 
And then I'm going to press it up. And then we're going to burnish it down. And then I'm just going, you can use really any kind of flat tool. Um, you can use your fingers. Um, I have fat fingers, so I find it easier to just do this. And I am just going to kind of press in my corners so that when I do this, I'll get a nice even corner for my cover. Take our backing off. And press it down. So there we have our base cover. I am just going to kind of go over these so that it folds nicely. So there is our base. So because we are not creating pages in this, what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and cover this. So I'm going to put a strip on here and then I'm going to put two pieces to cover this so that it looks very smooth. So let's put that to the side. I'm going to grab my paper trimmer and I'm going to trim a piece to eight inches because if you recall this was eight and one eighth so I'm gonna put this over this like this and then I'm gonna cut two pieces to six and one eighths by eight to cover these two sides so I'm gonna grab two pieces And I'm going to cut them to six and one eighth because we cut this to six and a quarter. So six and one eighth this way. And we have eight inches this way. Put these aside because we will use them. I always keep my scraps. You never know when you might use them. All right, so I'm gonna lay this one down first, just like this. It doesn't have to be, you know, centered. I just wanna make sure that I get good coverage. And then I am going to put this one like this and this one like this. So it looks like it's very well finished. You have your spine right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna apply glue all over the back of my cardstock. I'm gonna take special care to get that center piece really well. And then I'm just going to very quickly put some glue on the edges of this as well. Because this is gonna be folded, I just wanna make sure that I get really good adhesion there. There we have that. I'm going to burnish it down really, really well. And then I'm going to use my bone folder and I'm going to go over my creases really, really well. All right, other side. So 
So there we have those. And then we're just going to glue these on, on either side as well. So let's do that. All right, so now we have our base. So again, this is gonna be kept very simple. We're just gonna put two waterfall features on either side of this. So we're going to do horizontal, so landscape instead of portrait. Um, let's go ahead and cut the cardstock for that. So, so I wanna leave some space on either side. So what we're gonna need, oops. <laughs> Uh, these are six and a quarter, um, so I think I'm going to do three and a half by five mats. So if we mat those so that they're mat, that you have the flip part of the waterfall <laughs> um, itself and then a um, mat on top of that um, so that you can mat the photo on top of that, you need to go up, I'm going to go up a half an inch so that I can make it a quarter and a quarter. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go to five and a half. And then this is eight and one eighths. It would be five and a half by four. Um, and if we're gonna do four, I'm gonna do them maybe every three eighths of an inch. So I can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do eight, eight mats. So I'm going to grab my paper trimmer first. And again, we're gonna just very simply do that on both sides. So I'm gonna grab my paper trimmer. going to grab two pieces of black cardstock and I am going to cut those to five and a half inches just like this. Set those aside. Now I'm going to grab my scoreboard because I just find it easier. Um, I can score with my trim with my trimmer, um, but when I'm doing a bunch of score lines, I just find this easier. So I'm gonna line this up with the long edge across the top, and I'm gonna score at every three eighths of an inch. Uh, and I'm gonna do this eight times. So three eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch, three eighths, Three eighths. Three eighths. Whoop. Three eighths. Three eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and three eighths. <laughs> All right, and we are gonna do that for both of these pieces. And eight. Set that aside for now, and I am just going to go through and fold along all of the score lines for both of those. And we will burnish all of these down. And we're just going to do that for both. And you want to try and make sure that you're keeping the folds nice and even. So when you do this, that they're nice and flush. have these all folded I'm just going to 
varnish along the folds so that they're nice and crisp. And again, I'm gonna do that for both. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut 16 pieces to go on, on these. So those pieces are going to be cut to five and a half by four, and again, 16 of those. I'm going to cut three pieces at a time to save a little bit of time. So five and a half, and then five and a half, and four, so that's three, and four, so that's six. Nine, twelve, grab one more piece, five and a half, and five and a half, We had 12, 14, and 16. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take all of these and we're going to glue one each to each of these sections. So there's eight sections here and eight sections here. So we're gonna go ahead and do all of those. So I'll do a couple on camera and then I'm going to kind of skip ahead. So I'm just gonna put glue on right up to that score line. And you wanna make sure that you get pretty good coverage because these are going to be pulled down frequently <laughs> and you want to make sure that these things stay exactly in place. And then when we lay this down, we're going to lay it down right up to that score line. And then the next one is just going to do the same thing. So we're going to put glue right up to that score line in that one three eighths of an inch section. And then we're going to lay another piece down right up to that score line, making sure that we line everything up as well as possible. And we're going to do that for all the rest of these and all the rest of these, and then we'll be back. Okay, so now we have our two kind of base pieces put together. We have these little strips down here that's still left. I am actually going to use these to attach two more pieces that are this size. So I'm going to actually use these to attach two more pieces to this that will um, kind of come up and attach up here so that we can hold these closed as well as kind of make it look a little bit more finished. So, uh, let's go ahead and cut two pieces. So, these are four inches. So, if I did four inches, it would come up to here, which I think is probably enough space to get um, 
to get a magnet stuck on here without it, you know, interfering too much either way. So I'm going to cut two more pieces that are five and a half by four. grab our scoreboard and I'm gonna take my first one of these I'm just gonna line this up here and I'm right after the last flap so right after this I'm gonna line that up along a score line and I'm gonna score down so that this flips up and over just like that. And then I'm going to attach this to this just like this. So it's going to go this way. And then we will be putting another mat over this anyway, so it'll hide that seam for the most part. So let's do that with our other one. I'm just going to fold this up and then I'm going to burnish it down so it lays nice and flat. We're going to do that with the other one too that we already folded up. And then we're going to attach these. So they're going to go on here like this. So I'm actually going to flip these over so I can put glue on the back of this. And again, you want to get pretty good coverage. And then I'm just going to lay glue over that. And then I'm just going to lay this right up against that score line. So now this will come down here. And once we finish all the components, it will work just like that. So let's do the same thing with this one. So now we have those two pieces. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of magnets on these because I want to make sure that they stay closed. And I think I'm going to put two on each, or four in total. And I'm just going to use some of my three-quarter inch scrapbook.com adhesive, double-sided adhesive. So I'm just going to put one like this. We're just going to make sure it should work fairly. <laughs> there we go. We're going to do the same thing for this side. So we will have our mats on here and it will cover those completely. I'm just going to make sure those are pressed down well. Just want to make sure that they stay. Then we're going to do the same thing with this side. 
and there we have our magnets. So that will hold these closed quite well, I think. Two may have been slightly overboard, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So the next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab some scrap pieces that I have. Uh, you can use fresh if you need to. And I am going to make the pieces that will kind of hold these in place and allow you to pull them down to flip them up. So I'm going to cut these to one and a quarter inches. And this is eight and a half. And I'm going to cut three of these. Again, I'm cutting it to one and a quarter inches, and I'm gonna cut three. Put this aside. And we'll have to cut these again, but I'm gonna grab my scoreboard. And because these are five and a half inches across, I need a section that is five <laughs> that is five and five eighths of an inch. So I'm just gonna score it to one, two, three, four, five, and five, whoops, five and five eighths. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I mean, you can do it at whatever, but two works. And then seven and five eighths. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna cut this piece in half, essentially. Grab my scoreboard. I'm gonna take my unscored piece and I'm gonna cut it four and a quarter. And then I am going to fold at my score lines, make sure, making sure that they're lined up and I'm gonna burnish them down. I'm going to do that for both of them, making sure that everything's lined up. So just like that. And then we're going to take these pieces and we are going to attach them to the back here to complete the band. So I'm just going to put glue here. glue here and then just so I can be sure I'm going to put some glue on that side I'm going to lay this down so that it's lined up properly there Oops. and then I'm going to lay this one down and burnish so we make sure we get a nice good adhesion and then we have our band and we're just going to do the exact same thing to this side so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open these up and these bands are gonna end up like this. So your two seams, where you have your two seams, it's gonna go in the back. So they'll be back here. So we're gonna open this up and we're gonna slide this on just like this. You don't want it to be too tight, but you don't necessarily want it be, to be very loose either. So this is just gonna go like this. So close to that bottom edge. And this is going to flip down and this back piece attaches to this. So what I'm gonna do is, oops, don't want to get glue all the way to the edge because it is one eighth of an inch bigger and you don't want to get glue anywhere but on that band because if you get it anywhere else you could potentially glue your waterfall together completely which you definitely do not want to do 
All right, so I'm gonna make sure that these are lined up pretty well. And then I'm gonna hold this and I'm just going to press this down. So there's the first one. So this just goes like this. And let's do the second one. These will be attached here, just like this. So we are gonna need pattern paper for back here. We're gonna need or want pattern paper for here and here. And then on the inside, I'm just gonna use some basic white um, cardstock. I'm gonna use some Nina uh, Solar, Solar White classic craft solar white I think it's called um, on the inside I really like it it's what I keep on hand f for use for this kind of thing because you can stamp on it and everything it works it's beautiful paper to work with so we're going to go ahead and cut all of the white pieces that we will need for the inside of this so I'm only going to do it on the base I'm not going to do it up here you can use these areas for journaling or whatever but I'm going to leave them plain so we're gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna need 16 in total that are three and three quarters by five and a quarter. And then when we're done doing that, we're gonna need to cut two pieces for these inside base parts that are larger because these are more square than, than these matted. So, I'll grab my cutting board. some of that cardstock and I'm going to cut two at a time. So again, these need to be five and a quarter, five and a quarter, five and a quarter, and then they need to be three and three quarters. So you need 16 of these. This is eight, and I will do the other eight separately, but these will just lay on all of these mats just like this. So just like this. And you can stamp them with a camera stamp or not. I'm not going to for this particular project, uh, but you can. So you need eight of those for each one, so 16 in total. And then we will be back to create the two pieces that we need for the base there. Okay, so now that I have the eight for each side or 16 in total of the three and three quarter by five and a quarter pieces, um, these are for my matting, I am going to cut two pieces of that same white cardstock for here. And what I want is for them to be a little bit taller than this so that this doesn't get stuck when you try and close it. So the size of this is about five and a quarter. So I'm gonna do about five and three eighths by five and a quarter. And I need two of those. I'm gonna grab another piece of paper. And I'm gonna cut this to five and three eighths. And five and three eighths. And then five and a quarter. All 
right, so this, these pieces here, the taller part, not they look pretty square now, will go just under here, just like this. And then we are going to put one each of each of these. One is on the flip side of this part. And then we're going to have one on every one of these. And we're going to do that for both sides. So you can pre-cut a lot of your cardstock before you even get started. This should come together pretty quickly and easily. So, oops. So this will just sit like this and it will become a little bit thicker but your magnets should still hold that together really, really well. So we're gonna go ahead and glue all of those down and I'm just gonna speed things up so you don't have to sit and watch me forever There we go. I will do this second one off camera and when I'm done we'll come back and start actually cutting some of our pattern paper for our little waterfall album. Okay so now that I have my two waterfalls finished we are going to choose some paper. So we are going to need four pieces uncut. So one each for the inside front and back covers and then one each for the front and back covers. And then we're going to need to cut two pieces for our spines. And then we're going to cut four pieces for these because if you recall we already put some on here. So let's go ahead and choose our four pieces for here. So this is interestingly a different color. Um, we're going to just glue this down just like this. Grab my glue. Just like that. I'm going to move these out for a second. And we're going to put this one on here. And I'm not going to put a closure on this because it's going to stay closed pretty well on its own, I think, because there's not, there's not really any bulk to it. So we're going to put that on there. This, we're going to need to cut a piece. So we did this at one inch. So I'm going to cut a piece to seven eighths of an inch. And again, I'm just going to use this one because I think that'll be fine. We're just going to put this right on here. So 
just like that. And we're going to flip it over. So there's our cover. And we are putting these on like, like this. This is why I like using clear glues. That just breaks right off. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut a second piece of um, paper to go on here that's cut to 7 eighths of an inch. And this can just go right in like this. Although this paper is kind of fun too, actually. I think we'll do that. Just because it's fun. Okay. So now, these will go on here like this. So we just have to choose some pattern paper to go on these. I like those. So these are again going to be cut to three and three quarters by five and a quarter. So I'm going to use this one for up here and this one for down here. And again, five and a quarter, three and three quarters. And you really only need one piece of paper to do both sides because you can get two out of one. So one more time. And I guess I can do this on camera. So five and a quarter by three and three quarters and three and three quarters. These are just going to go on just like this and just like this. As you can see, you can get a number of these cute little waterfall albums out of one pad of paper. So, and you can use, I mean, you can make these kind of any size you want. I wouldn't make them too small. But because you can kind of customize it to your needs, you can make it a little bit bigger, you can make it a little bit smaller, you could make it square, like you could do a 6x6 six six if you had 6x6 six six paper. Obviously you wouldn't be able to get quite as many of the um, waterfall flip pieces as in a 6x6 six six as you can out of a 6x8. Six but I'm going to go ahead and glue these down and we are almost done. Okay, so 
we have all of these together. These are going to be glued in and the only thing that's going to hold them in place is this kind of belly band strip here that we attached this very last one to. You don't want to get it anywhere else because this is what allows everything to kind of slide when you pull it down. So I'm going to put liquid adhesive on the whole backing. I'm going to take special care right at the seams here because you want to make sure that this holds really well. But again, be very careful that you don't get too much glue on it because you don't want it to seep out and glue to this. Because if you glue that down, then your waterfall is not going to work at all. So we're just going to do that. I'm going to make sure I don't really have any excess here. And then I am just going to eyeball the placement of this. You can go ahead and measure if you want to. I'm not much for measuring um, for this kind of work. So I'm just going to try and make sure that it's pushed down really, really well. And then I'm going to just open this up and I'm going to push it down again. I just really want to make sure that that is stuck really well. And there we have our first one. So I'm going to do the same thing on the back of this. So I'm going to move on to the front cover. You can do anything that you want with your front cover. Um, this collection came with some little tags and whatnot that I cut out. Um, so there's like this one and this one. Uh, the 12 by 12 pad comes with some as well. They're I believe a little bit bigger and there's a few more. Uh, I'm actually going to just use a basic frame. Um, that I'm gonna mat a piece of gold foil cardstock on. This frame, <laughs> I, I created this myself on the Cricut. It cuts and scores as you see here. Uh, and then it also has this cut frame that mats perfectly on the front as well. I am going to go ahead and glue these together. So this is designed in a way that you should be able to uh, put these on the back. You can also do it this way, like we would ordinarily create, say, a pocket for one of our you know, pocket pages. Uh, it's entirely up to you. I don't know why I prefer when I make frames to have the tabs on the outside. <laughs> There's really no logic to it. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just putting glue on my tabs. Again, taking care not to put too much on because you don't want it seeping out. Then I'm going to flip this down and press these down. So there's my frame and then my mat that is perfectly cut to go on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and lightly apply glue. You want to be very careful with foil cardstock because the lines from your glue can oftentimes be seen uh, in the foil on the other side. Um, so I want to put this on here very lightly so as to not have my lines show through. But you need to do it fairly quickly because the stuff that you did at the beginning might start drying really quick. I'm just going to lay this down. Oops. Oops. 
make sure it's pressed firmly. And then I'm just going to lay this down on here. And I think I might take one of these and maybe lay it down like this. I am creating these flowers to go on here, but I wanted to show you really quick how I am creating them. So I just took a couple pieces of plain white cardstock and I, these are uh, the Cinch and Go poinsettia flowers from Spellbinders. Um, I've had them for a while. <laughs> Uh, they're technically, I guess, holiday dyes, but you can still get them. Uh, any flower dye that you have, generally speaking, you could use. Um, I like these ones, whoops, uh, just because they have some, um, They're already debossed, so it makes folding them to give them a little bit of extra shape easier. Sorry about the noise in the background that we get sometimes. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around uh, the hole, and then I'm going to offset them, matching up the holes. So I'm just going to press that down. So here's the basic flower. Now, you could put a gem in the center of these, which I think is actually what I'm going to do. Um, you could put, actually, I think I'll use these. You can put stamens in the center. And I am not so great with working with <laughs> stamens. I struggle a little bit. But essentially, what I do seems to work well for me is I just line them all up just kind of like this and then I fold them in half you can use as many or as little as you want and then I just feed them through the hole so I just have my crocodile punch that I am going to use my smallest hole And just enlarge that. Um, you can use a pokey tool or something else to kind of like force the threads through as well, which I have done many times in the past. Really it's up to you whatever works best for you. So I just pull them through kind of like this. They're not all ever going to be completely even. I am going to cut these so that I can more easily flatten them. I am going to take a piece um, of just scrap cardstock. I'm going to split these up. I'm going to put some hot glue on this. You can use regular glue. Uh, I just find hot glue <laughs> is easier. So I just put a little bead of hot glue on there and then I'm just going to use this to kind of hold everything in place. And then can cut off the excess threads. And now I have this cute little kind of flattened it a little bit. You have this cute little flower that you can add to your creations. So I'm not going to use this white one. I just wanted to use that as an example. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to do that same process with my flowers that match my creation. And we will be back. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly mat this little tag from the collection on a piece of black cardstock. I want to make it a little bit more solid and I want to frame it a little bit. So I'm just going to add some glue to the back of that, and then a lot, a little bit. And I'm just going to cut off the excess, just like that. And I'm going to take my snips and cut 
this. So now we have our flowers, we have our frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map my frame kind of like this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put glue on the back of this. Extra just around the seams to make sure that it stays. And then I'm just going to lay it down. And then I'm going to glue this just on the corner here of the frame. So I'm just going to apply glue directly to the frame itself. And then I'm just going to press it down. Now this is foil, so it'll take a little bit longer for it to adhere properly. So I'm just gonna leave it. And then I'm gonna put a couple flowers just like this. And then a couple flowers just like that. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and use my hot glue. just because it's a lot easier. So you get faster adhesion this way. So I'm just gonna put this one right here at the corner. another one just like that. So there we have our finished album. So this one is fairly easy to make. I know it seems like a lot of steps but a lot of it is just cutting the same things over and over again and then you have this pretty quick and easy gift to make. Once you've made a couple these will come together for you really really quickly and easily and they're pretty easy to make they don't take that much time uh, especially if you like pre-cut a bunch of them and then glue them all together and you can glue them all together while sitting watching something the lap tray or something so there you have this quick and easy little waterfall album with quite a few spots for photos so as always, if you are interested in seeing more, don't forget to click on that subscri subscribe button and make sure you turn on notifications so you can get notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks everyone.